had a wore a lot of hats on this movie. Direct, uh, produce, right? Uh, you wrote it, and uh, it was your story. You came up with. The, did you come up with the yeah, initial I, idea? I wrote the first script alone. Where did were you thinking of the scenario for some time, or did it come to you? Uh, it was like kind of actually when I was shooting um, uh, the Patriot, mm -hmm. I picked up a, a, a book in a bookstore in South. That uh, was about Charleston. Uh, and it was called The Coming of the Global Superstorm. It's by Whitley Stripe and Art Bell. And it's pretty much the scenario of this movie. Is, is it really? And it took me nearly a year to kind of acquire the rights. And while I like acquiring the rights, I already like kind of started working on this uh, story. It was a non-fiction book, mm -hmm. so I had to come up with uh, the whole plot. And, uh, and that's why I have story credit. Okay. Well, the, um, a lot of people probably always will ask if, it's, if it is based... Uh, when you watch it, you, you, don't, you know that this is a scenario that's possible mm -hmm. in some some form. Well, the, the underlying but science, you know, at first when I read this book, The Coming of the Global Superstorm, I thought it's pure science fiction. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was good science fiction. So um, then I kind of checked out the, the, the science behind it and, and learned to my surprise that it's much more real than we think, you know. And um, so, so I kind of thought, what a great, you know, idea to make a movie like that. Because yes, it's a, it's a movie. Mm -hmm. It has to entertain, but in its core, you know, there's a message there, you know, which like kind of uh, will give people something. Maybe people will buy hybrids after this. Yeah, <laughs> for example. I actually ordered one. Did you really? Yeah. I actually drive one. They're not bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think they should like make them a little bit better looking, don't you think? They have the Honda Civic. I have that yeah, one. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the one I yeah. ordered too. Uh, well, let's. When you were making this film, I, I only found, I know the year 2002, mm -hmm. where we had all that weather. Mm -hmm. That strange weather. Yeah. What were you thinking? I mean, that was a coincidental. Well, yeah, it was. A, I'm, I'm not in, <laughs> involved in the weather, so, so yeah, it was very coincidental and very scary in a way because we were always saying like, what is happening? What is happening? And so we were like, kind of at that time, the crew was joking, if well, Roland, we have to hurry up, you know, otherwise this will become a documentary. <laughs> and I said, I hope not. <laughs> well, some things were happening. I, I remember there was hail, a uh, big hailstorm in China. Yeah, China. There was like floods in. Uh, in, 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 uh, London in Europe, too. Europe, yeah. Europe, and, and the heat wave in France, and it was like, and it still keeps going. There was uh, only a couple of months ago there was snow in Athens. That's First right. time it ever snowed there. That that is well, you know, this movie is an about it's about a new ice age, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is part of I guess the whole. I I don't really understand the entire scope of what what a. Uh, because this is global warming, even though you're having an ice age. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a theory, you know, and it's like more and more becomes the mainstream theory that like kind of actually global warming can uh, trigger a cooling trend. And we explain it in the film, you know, in detail in a way. And what happens is like kind of it's in our movie, it creates this huge storm, but like in, a, in reality, it would like simply shut down the North Atlantic current, which is like this, this conveyor belt of energy constantly feeding Europe and, and nor, uh, North America. And when this shuts down, it will be a colder climate. And that like kind of will cause, you know, a lot of, lot of trouble. Mm. In, the, in this film, you have a couple of really great scenes of disaster. Mm -hmm. You have a, the L.A. tornado scene and yeah. what happens in New York. What, what scene were you looking forward to yourself to see? Because it, it, it's so... I, yeah, I think the twister scene in, uh, in L.A. was like my favorite. Uh, because it's also like an I love there, so it's like it was a little stab at Hollywood <laughs> to rip apart, you know, like Hollywood. So, uh, but uh, it's also like, a, you know, it's, a, it's an odd scene because there's not really one main character there. Mm -hmm. You know, so you kind of have to create very fast some characters and then you have to kill them. So yeah. it's like... <laughs> and you manage to get humor in like you yeah, did with Independence exactly, Day. Yeah. And usually but it's, a, it's a much different humor. I think mm -hmm. the humor is, 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 uh, is a little bit different this time around. Had to be because the subject is like a, uh, like Independence Day never took itself serious. This movie has to take himself a little bit more serious. Well, I think most of the humor came through the news media that mm -hmm. you are portrayed on. <laughs> They're just, uh, you know, it's, if this is just another big, huge event and... <laughs> <laughs> They're standing in the middle of it, you know? Not yeah, oblivious. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks.